Hello and welcome back everyone to Varsity Tutors Virtual Summer Camp and lesson two of Swimming with Sharks. Today we're going to get an insider's look at a shark attack from a man, Paul DeGelder, who has been inside a shark. So uh, it'll be pretty exciting and then we'll talk about things that you're scared of and how you can face those fears. If you remember from last week, the one thing we want you to know is Paul's not scary, um, even though he does some scary things. So please ask questions in that great white chat box to the right there. We'll have plenty of opportunity at the end to answer your questions. We've got some good ones from last week that uh, we still need to answer. Paul's also going to ask you a handful of questions too. So use that, that chat panel there. Um, keep it interactive and, and we'll keep it fun that way. Um, just like sharks are always in need of swimming, Paul's in constant need of interaction, um, as is his seal that he's uh, showing us there. Plenty of props. Um, also have a camera nearby because uh, in about a half an hour or so, we're going to have an opportunity for you guys to take a picture with Paul, upload it to Instagram, Paul and potentially a uh, special guest, upload it to Instagram, tag Paul, tag Varsity Tutors uh, for an opportunity to win an autographed shark. All right, I think I've chummed the waters enough to, uh, to get us ready for, uh, for a lesson here today. So let me introduce you once more to your teacher for today, shark attack survivor, Paul DeGelder. Hello everyone and welcome back to class number two. If you remember last week, we went through some awesome sharky fin facts and we got some really great answers. We learned about some cool stuff. And this week we're gonna do a, a, something a little bit different. Now we're gonna to have to get warmed up for this one because it's gonna be really, oh, it's gonna be hard work. So make sure you're doing your, your stretches, you stretch your fins out, you get warmed up because this is gonna be rough and tumble. We're gonna talk about getting eaten by a shark. And let me tell you, like Brian said, I've been inside a shark. It is very dark, so I hope you're not afraid of the dark. And it smells very fishy. And I don't know about you, but I don't really like the smell of fish. It's kind of gross. And so I wanted to get out of that shark as fast as possible. And fortunately, uh, I'm still around. So today's plan of attack is how Paul, that's me, came face to face with Jaws. And then we're going to talk about the attack. We're going to talk about fear and how to unfear sharks. And then we're going to talk about your fears and maybe some of my fears as well, because I have a lot of them I'm scared of everything. And, uh, <laughs> and then we're going to wrap it up. So let's start out with a bit about how I came face to face with Jaws, because you know what, I get on stage and I talk to lots of people all the time and people think I'm going to talk about, you know, the military and the shark attack, but it's not all about the military and all about getting eaten, even though that's a pretty big point. The, the time leading up to that was just as interesting and not always good. You know, I went through a lot of stuff that maybe you guys are going through as well. Uh, when I was little, I used to get bullied at school by the big kids and that made it pretty hard at school. I wasn't very happy a lot of the time. Uh, and so I, I focused on my studying and my reading and things like that. And I was a, a swimmer as well. My dad was a police officer and he was a sw swimming instructor as well. So I spent a lot of time swimming in the pool and I got really, really good. And my dad used to set times for us to beat and he would give us money if we beat our time. So maybe if we were doing the 50 meters freestyle and he wanted us to break 30 seconds, he'd give us maybe $2 or $3 if we broke that. Doesn't sound like much now, but back then it was, it was pretty big. And so that money was a pretty good incentive to beat my times, but you know what was a bigger incentive? Meaning, you know what made me swim faster? Sharks in the pool. I don't know how much time you guys swim in the pool and I don't know how good your imagination is, but my imagination is pretty good. And I get into the pool for a race and the imaginary shark lords that lived above the swimming pool would open up a trap door behind me and a shark would come out and chase me down the pool. And so no one could beat me because it made me swim so fast. And I've heard that other people grew up doing that same thing or even just like, like it makes no sense. But when you're in the bathtub and you start thinking about sharks, I got a little bit scared. I don't know about you. See, I told you I'm scared of everything. And so 
I ended up becoming quite a good swimmer. But then I started not really paying attention in school and I was getting distracted and doing some other things. And so I started not doing very well. And I didn't know what to do with myself for work after I left school because no one really taught me what to do. So if no one's teaching you what to do, and I hope they are, talk to your parents because there are so many amazing jobs out there in the world that I didn't even know. I didn't know I could be a shark diving TV guy. No one told me that. This is like the best job in the world and no one even told me I could do it. And so I didn't know what to do for a couple of years and I moved around and then uh, I decided, you know what, I'm about to be 23 years old. I'd better pull myself into line and work out what I want to do for the rest of my life. And so I called mum because I didn't know who else to call. And I knew that mum would always give me a good answer. So I picked up the phone and said, hey, mum, I don't know what to do. Can you help me out? And she said, of course. She said, why don't you talk to your brothers? Because I had two younger brothers, Travis and Sean. She said, they're in the army and they really love it. And so I thought, all right, I'll give them a call. And I picked up the phone again. And I said, hey, Travis and Sean what do you think about me joining the army? And they wet their pants laughing, which was very demoralizing. And they just thought there's no way Paul is going to be able to pass the army. But they said it was a good life. They said, look, you get paid to travel, you get to shoot guns, you get to, uh, they were in artillery. So they got to shoot the big rockets. And they said one thing though, just don't join infantry. It's too hard. You won't make it. So I joined infantry, <laughs> I showed them, but I had a good time. It was really hard, but I had a really great time. I, and I got to do something that was really special to me. I got to protect people. And that made me feel really good because like I told you before, I used to get bullied because I was really skinny. I was short. I had big ears. My ears used to stick out like that. And people would call me elephant boy. And it was really mean. And I had face full of freckles as well. And then I had a growth spurt and I didn't have big ears anymore. And my freckles went away and I started doing kickboxing and no one picked on me anymore. But I had a really good time and I got to protect people that were getting bullied by other people as well. So the important lesson there for me was that if you go through something like that, then you should never do it to someone else. You should do the opposite. You should help these people. And so I got to spend a couple of years in the army, jumping out of planes and helping people out. I got overseas trips, which was really cool. But you know what? I had to spend a lot of time in the Australian bush. And you know what's in the Australian bush? Everything that wants to kill you. Deadly spiders, deadly snakes, wild pigs, big, what do they call them? Water buffaloes. I had a spider as big as my hand sleep under my head one night. And then I had a deadly brown snake slither through my legs. And so I thought, you know what? I'm sick of being dirty and smelly in the bush and pooping in a dirty hole with having deadly insects trying to kill me. I'm going to try and find another job. And I looked around the military because I knew it was pretty big. There's a lot of jobs out there to do. You can do anything from electrician to doctor to nurses to intelligence. Um, so many jobs. And so I thought there's got to be something else out there that I can do. And I found out about these guys called the clearance divers. And there was no girls allowed in then because girls weren't allowed in combat roles. But now, guess what? Girls can be in it too. So that's really, really cool that the girls get to come and have all the fun with us. And so I tried out for the clearance divers. It's a little bit like the Navy SEALs trying to get in. You've got to go through like a lot of physical training. And I had to learn to scuba dive which was cool because I'd never scuba dived in my life. And then I had to search for bombs as well. So learning to be in the Navy, learning to scuba dive, learning to search for bombs, it was pretty, pretty hard, but I passed. And then I had to go on a selection process. And that was 10 days of PT nonstop. Can you imagine? People go and do PT for an hour. I had to do it for 10 days. We started with 43 people and by the end, we only had 10 left. Everyone else quit. And they woke us up in the middle of the night to swim across Sydney Harbour and back all in the dark. And it took five or six hours. 
And then they woke us up after an hour sleep and we had to run a half marathon. It's ridiculous. I felt like my legs were falling off. I woke up in the middle of the night. We'd spent so much time in the water kicking our legs like this. I woke up in the middle of the night kicking the bunk above my bed. So I had bruises on my feet. And so it went on for 10 days, but I passed. I was exhausted and I took a week off to recover. But then I got to become a Navy clearance diver. And we get to do some incredible jobs. We get to jump out of helicopters into the ocean. We get to go diving on oxygen rebreathers and do secret missions. We get to, oh, we get to use tools. We get to use incredible tools like giant chainsaws and a thing called an ultrathermic broco cutting gun. It burns at 5,000 degrees and can cut almost anything on earth underwater. It cuts through solid steel like butter. It's so cool. And then I was doing that for about four years. And I turned up to work one day, and this was in 2009. It was February 11th, and that's the end of summer for Australia, and usually quite hot. And so I turn up to work with three of my friends and we're doing what's called a counter-terrorism training exercise. And we were testing new equipment that the military wanted to, to use. It was unmanned video and sonar. And what they wanted to do was they could take this equipment and they could put it on a wharf or they could put it on a ship anywhere around the world and they turn it on and it will like detect people swimming in the water that might want to put bombs on our ships and then uh, everyone will run out the alarms will go off and you can catch the bad guy and so we were pretending to be the attack swimmers and so we were right in Sydney Harbour and there was me there was my three teammates in the black inflatable boat called a zodiac or we call it a zod for short because australians are lazy when we speak and we want to shorten everything and so my chief who was the boss of the day he was on the wharf with the all the scientists at the navy base and they were watching everything and so i had a new guy in the water for the first 30 minutes because he's the new guy and that's just how it works. If you're the new guy, you're going to do most of the work. And so I, I said, off you go, mate, go for a little swim. And he was just swimming up and back and up and back. And it started to get warm. It was about seven o'clock in the morning. And I thought, you know what? I wouldn't mind a swim as well. And so I said, jump out, mate, let me take over. And I rolled over the edge of the boat. And can you guess what I was wearing? Type it in. What do you think I was wearing? Ah, uh, yep, yep, absolutely. I was wearing a wetsuit. What color was my wetsuit? Pink? I don't wear pink wetsuits. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was wearing a black wetsuit and I was wearing black fins too. And so I was on the surface of the water, on my back, kicking my legs. And every time I got into the water, guess what I was thinking about? What do you reckon? What do you think I was thinking about? Octopuses, giant squid. Yes, exactly. I was thinking about giant squids. No, sharks. Yes, thank you. I was thinking about sharks because I was in Sydney Harbour and Australia is well known for its sharks. And so I'm just thinking, okay, what if a shark grabs me right now? And I thought, oh, geez, what am I going to do? And I thought, well, I better have my hands free so I can fight it off. And I uh, started started looking to where I was supposed to be going. I was only in the water for about four minutes and I looked over my shoulder to make sure that I was still headed in the right direction. And guess what happened? Who's got the answer? <laughs> That's right. I got bitten by a shark. It was the most terrifying thing that has ever happened to me. This shark came up from underneath me like that. And okay, and I have to give you a warning now, okay? We're gonna have a little intermission here because I, like I said, I speak on stage a lot. And can you guess, we spoke about this last week. I told you that the adults pass out, okay? So keep an eye on your parents if they're with you because we don't want them falling over and hurting themselves, even though you might laugh and find it funny. I, I find it funny too. But how many people do you think 
have passed out during my presentations when I talk on stage? What are your numbers? What do you think? 10,000? <laughs> Not quite 10,000. I've had 68 people pass out live in the auditoriums. I had a job for Microsoft once and six people passed out in one go and they were standing up and they just went bloop, 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 bloop. Even the guy that was controlling the computer system and the sound, he passed out over his control panel and was dribbling into his electronics, which is very dangerous. But of those 68 people that passed out, Fifth, sorry, 65 of them were men. I guess you women are just much tougher than the guys because all the guys pass out. I had a guy pass out while he was driving his car. He was listening to a podcast I was doing and his wife was sitting next to him in a, in a caravan in New Zealand. And she was just listening along and driving along. And then she noticed that all of a sudden the car started going. And she looked over and her husband had passed out listening to my shark attack story. So <laughs> the message here is keep an eye on your parents because they might pass out. And if you're really worried about them, maybe tell them to go into the other room or just block their ears. Just block their ears and go to a happy place. Ow! Oh, my robot hand was trying to grab my head. Silly robot hand. So, all right, here we go. You ready? So, a shark came up from underneath me. Now, we went through the different types of sharks last week, didn't we? So, what sort of shark do you think it was that came up from underneath me and grabbed me on the leg? Which one? Hammerhead? No, it wasn't a hammerhead. A great white? No, I'm glad it wasn't a great white. Anyone else? A bull shark. Good one. Bull shark. It was a bull shark. Came up from underneath me and grabbed me by the leg. And I thought, oh, my God, what am I going to do? The shark's eating me. I didn't know what to do. I've never even seen a shark before. And then I thought, I've seen Shark Week. I've seen the Crocodile Hunter. I'll jab it in the eyeball. And so I tried, but I couldn't move my arm for some reason. And I looked down and the shark had my leg and my hand in its mouth. So I thought, left hand, I'll jab it in the eyeball with my left hand. And I reached over, but I just couldn't reach the eyeball. So I grabbed it by the nose and I'd never even seen a shark before in my life. And all of a sudden it's attached to me and I'm like grabbing a shark by the head. And I just thought, this is crazy. What sort of day am I having? And so I tried to push it off me, but that didn't work. And I tried to punch it in the head because that's what they tell you to do, right? You punch the shark in the nose and then it goes, oh, geez, that hurt. And it swims away. So I thought I'll do that, but it started to shake me. And before I could punch it or oh, the pain of the teeth, like biting me, it was too much. And I just, I just couldn't fight it anymore. And all the energy went out of me and I, it nearly killed me. Yeah. It's, you can actually watch the video with permission from your parents. You can watch the video of me getting attacked on YouTube. You can't really see that much. It's kind of grainy and like you see a black thing and then another black thing and then some thrashing. And it lasted about eight seconds. And I thought I was gonna die, but fortunately I didn't, obviously. Otherwise I'd be presenting as a ghost and you'd be able to see straight through me, but you can't because I'm real, see? So, <laughs> so the shark did bite me and it took a little taste test of me, which was really rude because it ate me for breakfast and I hadn't even had breakfast at that point. So, you know, that, I think that was pretty uncool. Like it could have asked, but you know what? It's a shark doing sharky stuff. So what are you going to do? It was swimming around looking for some breakfast. What do you think I looked like so that the shark decided it was going to bite me? What do you think in my black wetsuit with my black flippers flopping around on the surface? What do you think I look like? Huh? That's right. I looked like Sammy the seal. G'day, Sammy. So this is what I look like, even though not a white one. Usually they come in black, but you can get some babies and stuff in, in this color. But I looked like a black seal. 
And so the shark decided it was going to have a little taste test and it grabbed me and it got some like, oh, oh thank you, Sammy. Go sit over there. Um, it's too distracting. You, you'll attract the sharks. We don't want sharks here right now. We don't want to attract the sharks. We're busy learning. And so I popped to the surface. I couldn't feel my leg. My hand was gone. I swam back to my safety boat with one hand and one leg, which was really hard. And I really didn't swim very fast. <laughs> Next time you go in the pool, try and swim with one hand and one leg. You go around in circles. <laughs> Luckily, I had my friends in the boat. And so they grabbed me and they looked after me. And, you know, it was pretty scary. It was pretty scary. And my friends were scared. And so I didn't want them to be scared. So instead of letting them worry, I, I said, hey, can you make sure someone looks after my motorbike? Because I don't think I'm driving home today. And they just looked at me and like, you might be dying, Paul. Stop worrying about your motorbike. I was like, I can't. I like my motorbike. So they kept me alive and they took me to the pier and the paramedics came and they took me off to hospital and then the doctors did surgery on me. And I was so, so very lucky uh, that I had my friends that were trained, that I was trained. I had the paramedics that were trained, the doctors. And you know what? One of I could have had all of those amazing people working on me. But if it wasn't for the 300 people that donated blood at the blood bank, it wouldn't have mattered at all. Those 300 people donated so much blood that it kept me alive. And so every little thing that we do for goodness in the world, sometimes you might not know it at the time, but those little things that we do can make a huge difference in someone's world. And so those 300 people actually kept me alive. And so now I'm trying to go and give blood as much as I can, but it's taking a really long time to give back 300 donations of blood. I don't know if there'd be much blood left in me if I kept doing it in one week. So I'm going to space it out. But I ended up in hospital and my leg got chopped off. Uh, and it was a strange surgery. Now, this is the bit where people pass out. Okay, so keep an eye on your parents. And because the shark had bitten me right up the top on the back of my leg, and they would normally remove the leg above the wound. But if they did that, then there wouldn't be any leg left. And so if you want to wear a prosthetic, you've got to have a little bit of leg left. And so... What they did was, and this is really gross, but they cut off my foot. They sliced open the back of my leg from the shark bite to where my foot used to be. And they took all the bones out of the lower part of my leg. So it was just like skin and muscle. Then they folded that muscle, like my calf muscle into the back of my leg where the shark bite was. So now my calf was my hamstring. You know what the weirdest part about that is? because they took all of the skin and muscle from the lower part of my leg and put it in the top. Now, when I get an itchy foot, I have to scratch my bum. <laughs> it took a lot of getting used to. I kept reaching for my foot. I'm like, oh no, it's a lot closer. So very, very weird. But I got used to it. And I spent a lot of time in hospital trying to figure out what I was gonna do. What are we gonna do from here? And I'd learned so many lessons over the years before I joined the military. And then I learned a bunch in the army and I learned a bunch in the Navy too. So the army taught me how to push past my limitations. Now we have uh, a, an idea of what we think we're, we're capable of. But did you know that you can go way, 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 way further than that? When you think that you're at your peak, whether you think, you know, you're doing exercises and you're tired or, you know, you don't think you can do something because you're scared, you are probably still able to call on another 40% of your internal spirit and your strength because we are so much more capable than what we give ourselves credit for. You know, I've learned a lot about the human spirit over the last bunch of years, and I've seen people do incredible things. I saw a guy with no arms win a gold medal in archery. Now, you might be saying that's impossible because you need your arms for archery. 
he didn't. The bow was on a stand. He grabbed it. He shot with his teeth and he won a gold medal. There was a guy who had both of his legs chopped off and then he was blind as well. And this guy was blind with no legs doing a competition in the 50 metres freestyle. Now that is what we are all capable of. We are so strong, but we don't have to wait for all that. Like, I don't want you guys to be doing that no legs with blind or playing games with no arms, but you know what? If it all goes bad, if it ends up that you have to lose something, doesn't mean that life is over uh, by any means. I, I was very scared for a while in hospital. I had no hand and my leg was gone. And you know, I thought that I was going to lose my whole career because I loved my job. Like you might've picked up on that, but how was I going to do it with one leg and one hand? You know, how am I going to jump out of a helicopter and slide down a rope with only one hand? I'll probably fall out. And so that scared me. And then I thought, how am I going to ride my motorcycle? I don't know if I can't do the throttle. And I was like, then the Navy's not going to let me play with bombs anymore. I look like I'm terrible at it. So it was really, really complicated. But I don't really like complicated things. I don't know about you, but... I'm just a simple person. I like simple choices. I don't like making things too complicated. I think sometimes we, and by we, I mean grown-ups, make things more complicated than they need to be. So I decided when it was so complicated, I was just going to make a simple choice. It's a simple choice that we get to make every single day. Whenever you want, you can always make this choice. And this is the, the power of choice is our only true power. How are we going to react? Now, that simple choice for me was, do I want a good life or do I want a bad life? Pretty simple, right? How many people want a good life? Let me know. Let me see. Who wants a bad life? Nope. No, nope. no one wants a bad life. Everyone wants a good life. That's right. And so I was no different. And so I thought, well, okay, how am I going to live a good life now? If I can't ride my motorbike, if I can't do my job, then you know, how am I going to get back to all of the things that I love? And I looked back onto my, my awesome army career, my awesome Navy career, and I thought, well, you know what? The first thing that we do every day as a soldier and a diver is PT physical training. And so I thought, okay, well, why would I break a good routine? So I'm just going to try and keep into a routine that I know that I know works. And so I thought I'll do PT. And then I looked around myself and I was laying in a hospital bed. And I couldn't even get up and go to the toilet by myself. And so I thought, how am I going to do PT laying in my hospital bed? And so I looked around and I thought, you know what, there's a lot of tools that we don't think of. And so I looked around and I saw a, a pole above my bed and the pole had a little handle on it. And so I had one hand and so I grabbed onto the pole and I started doing pull-ups on the bar above my bed. And my doctor came in and he was not impressed with me <laughs> at all. He thought I was going to be pulling out my stitches or something like that. But <laughs> he wasn't as impressed as I was. I thought I was doing pretty well. But I didn't want to lay there being a victim. I am not a shark attack victim. Let's get that straight. None of us out there are victims, okay? Never let anyone call you a victim. You are a survivor. Everything that you go through in your life, you are a survivor of and because of. And all of the bad stuff that we go through, it doesn't mean that that has to make you have a bad life because all of those bad things actually make us stronger because you go through something pretty bad, you know, it can be anything. It could be, you know, when grandma dies or um, if you get picked on at school, like I did, or something, you break your leg or anything, anything bad. Those times are really hard, but we get to use them as lessons to show how strong we are because how do you make a sword? Does anyone know how to make a sword? 
Well, you make a sword by getting lots and lots of piles of steel and then you hammer it do, 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 and it gets compressed and compressed and compressed. And you can only make an incredible sword by putting it through a lot of torment. You can only make a diamond by having coal and crushed at incredible temperatures. And those things, the struggles and the bad things we go through, they can make us into beautiful swords and diamonds too. If we let them, if we allow ourselves to see the lesson in the things that we're going through. So, man, I learned so much stuff and it was really good. And that's why, like, I don't get sad. People think that I might be upset about the shark attack and I might be upset about my hand missing and my leg missing. And I'll tell you what. I would really like to have my hand and leg back. <laughs> Does anyone have any spares? Can anyone want to send me a hand and a leg? I can, you're probably too small anyway. Then I'll walk like this. One of my legs will be shorter than the other and I'll have like one little hand and one big hand. I'll just I'll probably just look weird. So I might just stick with my prosthetics. They're, they're pretty cool anyway, right? And I bet you can't do this with your real hand, huh? Check this out. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 robot hand. Ba! Yeah. How's that? I got a laser gun in the end of my hand. It's, it's not actually a laser gun. It doesn't really do anything, but it holds my hand on and I can wave at you. Hey, 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 how you going? And next time a shark tries to take my hand, it can have it. I'll just get a new one. So not so bad, right? Like if you're going to have a robot hand, you might as well have a cooler, cool black one. So matches my robot leg. As you can see, it beeps. It does things like walk. <laughs> and it's waterproof too, so I can go swimming with it. So it's, it's all pretty cool. And so I don't get sad because I don't have time for that. I'm too busy enjoying life like you guys, getting out there in the world and staying busy and learning new cool stuff. And I get to work on Shark Week and that is pretty cool. And so, you know what? Sometimes you just got to look at all the good things in your life and bring them and surround yourself around, uh, surround yourself in all of the things that you love, whether it's your pets, whether it's your parents, whether it's playing sport, uh, whatever it is, all the stuff that you love, surround yourself in all of that and treasure it. And that is where happiness is found. Have adventures, you know, get uncomfortable. Don't be comfortable all the time. And I know you like playing computer games. A lot of kids like that. I used to like it as well, but you can't do it all the time because then you're not living, you know? It feels like you are, but you're not. You got to get out into the world and go hiking up mountains and swimming with sharks and just make sure you get your parents' permission before you swim with sharks because, yeah, because if, I don't have any spare hands to lend you. And so, yeah, it, it was a really tough learning lesson for a couple of years, but you might be able to tell I'm pretty happy. And do you know how I achieved that? How do you think you get better at something you tell me you show me how do you think you get better at something by getting a bigger brain who's being cheeky by practicing yes how do you how do you get better at riding your bike you practice so how do you get better at learning to read you practice how do you get better at anything you just practice. That's right. You practice. And so how do you get better at being happy? How do you get better at being motivated and positive and having like a big smile and making everyone around you happy? It's the same. You just have to practice it. And it's not always easy because sometimes you get sad and that's okay. It's nothing wrong with being sad. One of my friends taught me a very important lesson way, way back uh, after I got attacked by the shark, he knew that I might get sad. And he said, never feel bad about feeling bad. It's okay. Everyone feels bad, but just don't let it ruin your whole week, your whole month or your whole life. Feel bad, work out why you feel bad, feel bad for a little bit, and then just go on and move on to something else that makes you happy because you don't want to spend all your time sad. It's so much better being happy and having fun and you got to practice it. Like we said, you got to practice it. Practice that emotion. 
You know, sometimes you get stuck around people that will not really make you sad and maybe they're, maybe they're really boring. Maybe you got a, like a boring auntie or a boring uncle and you're like, oh, I don't want to go and see them. They're boring and they smell funny. But you get the chance to be the light that you want to see in someone else. Yeah, there's another power for you. You get your power of choice and the power of being the light that you want to see in other people. So be happy. Try and cheer them up. Bring them up to where you want to be because that's where the best place is to exist in life, being happy. So we are now going to go into facing fears. What are you guys afraid of? Uh, I was terrified of sharks and I was terrified of public speaking. And the only way that I got past that was with, once again, practice. So with sharks, I had to learn all about them because there's a, there's a, uh, a motto that's very well known and we used in the Navy. And that motto is knowledge dispels fear. And what that means is the more you know about something, the less afraid you become of it. And so I utilized that and I thought, okay, I'm really scared of sharks. Even after the shark attack, I was still scared of sharks. But because my shark attack in Australia was so wide, widely known around the world, whenever there was another shark interaction in Australia, the news people would come to me and they'd say, hey, Paul, can you tell us about why you think the shark attacked people and why, why, why are we scared? And so I didn't want to sound like a dummy on television. No, you don't want that, do you? You don't want to get on TV and have thousands of people looking at you and they're like, this guy's a dummy. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. And so, so I didn't look like a dummy. I had to learn about sharks. And so we live in such an incredible age where we have the wealth of the world's knowledge within a few keystrokes. We've got the internet. The internet will teach us everything we need to know. So I got onto the internet and I did some Googling. I Googled sharks and I started learning all about sharks. And I started learning about how many sharks people kill every year. And there's a hundred million sharks killed every year. And that's for food, which is very, very bad for you. So sharks in their flesh, they do this thing called bioaccumulation. And what that means is in the oceans, there's lots of toxic chemicals um, because humans have been putting them in there for a really long time. And so we're trying to clean them up now, but it's taking a long time. But the little fish, because they have the water going through their mouths and through their gills, they accumulate toxic metals like mercury, which is not very good for humans, but it's only a little bit. But then the bigger fish have some and then the bigger fish eat the little fish and then the, the sharks eat the big fish. And so the sharks have all of the, the poisons in their flesh from eating all the little fish and they can't get rid of it because they don't sweat. There's, there's no way for them to excrete it. And so if we eat that flesh, it's very, very bad for us. And so people strangely are eating sharks, something that's bad for them. And then they're cutting the fins off the sharks as well to put it in soup that doesn't even have any flavor. It's not even good for you. And so, you know, and then people go and catch them for fun. Now, I don't know about you, but if a shark was in the ocean throwing a cheeseburger out onto land and I ran over and went, oh, a cheeseburger. And then it was a big hook in my mouth and the shark started dragging me around the ocean by the face with a steel hook. I would be pretty upset. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like my idea of a good time. And so that's what people are doing to sharks. And so I just don't really see that that's a very nice thing to do. So people are treating sharks very, very badly. And so you tell me, maybe seven people in the whole world will die from a shark attack. That's seven and a half billion people and only seven in the whole world die. And that sucks, that's pretty terrible. I, like I said, it hurts and it's sad for the families, but when you look at seven and a hundred million, who do you think should be afraid of who? Do you think the sharks could be, should be afraid of us? Yeah, me too. And so that was when I overcame my fear because I realized how small a chance it would be for me to get attacked again and for most people to even see a shark in their lifetime. 
And so I thought, you know what, I've learned some pretty important lessons when I was in the military. And one of those was to stand up for people and things that can't stand up for themselves. And so as a soldier, I got to look after people that couldn't protect themselves. And now sharks can't stand up either because they don't have legs. <laughs> and hilarious. But they can't speak up for themselves either because they don't have a voice. And so it's up to people like me and it's up to people like you to learn about sharks and to know that they're not vicious man eaters out in the ocean waiting to snatch us up. They're just sharks doing sharky stuff. You know, they're looking for some food. They're swimming around. It sounds like a pretty good life to me. And so I don't think they should be vilified, vilified and look like the enemy and killed as much as they are. So, you know, that's up to us. And I learned, I changed my fear because I built that knowledge. And so what is it that you are afraid of that you think you might be able to overcome? Now let's go to the questions. All right, so we have some people that are afraid of the dark. Yeah, I get that. I get that because, you know, we as humans have really, really good imaginations. You know, remember my shark story getting chased down the pool? That didn't even happen. But in my head, I could see the shark. I could feel the shark teeth nibbling on my feet as I kicked them. So we have these really, really great imaginations. And when it's dark and your mind is making up monsters and ghosts and all that sort of stuff. But if you just stop, take a quick couple of nice, slow breaths and realize that there's really nothing there except your imagination, then you'll probably be able to overcome that pretty quickly. And just a quick tip, don't watch horror movies. <laughs> that was why I was scared of the dark. I went home from school one day and there was no one home. And so I'd just watch a werewolf movie at my nan's house. And all of a sudden I had werewolves chasing me through the house. I ran to my room. I got my grandma's rosary beads that she gave me and I swung them around my head like a lasso to kill the werewolves. And then I went and sat in the driveway until my parents came home. So I get it. It's scary, but it's all in our imagination. But what else is it that you're afraid of? All right, lots of lots of answers. Some people, some people said nothing. Oh, I don't believe that. Uh, sharks. Some people are scared of sharks too. Yeah, I, that's totally understandable because sometimes you see them with their teeth gnashing, and it's it, they're in the ocean, and we're very vulnerable in the ocean. So the best way to deal with that is, you know, we have to be smart because we're a little bit more intelligent than the sharks. And so we have to try and do the right thing. So when you go to the beaches with your parents, make sure that they get onto the internet and they find out if there's been any sharks at that beach or in the area recently, find out if anyone's been bitten there. And if people have been bitten there, then maybe there's sharks still around. So maybe you want to choose a different beach. But I think a lot of the responsibility is on us because like I said, we're smarter than the sharks. And so let's, let's try and paint them in a good light. You know, they're a wild animal and they let us swim in their environment. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think you could go and slap a bear in the face with a big steak? <laughs> no way what do you think it's going to do it's definitely not going to give you a bear hug well it might give you a bear hug until you until it crushes all your bones but you can't go and go into africa and run around the jungle can you because something's going to eat you <laughs> like a lion a hyena like these are all what's called apex predators these are wild animals at the top of the food chain and you can't interact with them because they're predators and they'll eat you but a shark a shark is a very special apex predator it is the only predator that will allow you to exist in its environment and not only that it'll let you interact with it. Sometimes they're so curious, they'll swim directly up to your head. Like remember last week we were talking about the hammerhead sharks and their eyes are at the end and they can see 360 degrees, but they're so busy searching for stingrays, they'll swim directly into your face. And so you have to grab them by the head and push them away. Now, 
If you didn't know about sharks, you might think that that shark is coming to attack you, but it's not. It's just busy. It's just not a great multitasker like mum is. You know, sometimes they're just like, raise, raise, I gotta get raise. And so, you know, that is part of the reason why we need to stand up for these animals. We need to look after them. We need to look after our oceans. Now, what, what else are you afraid of? Bears and lions. <laughs> oh no, I think I've created new fears for people. Um, swimming in water that I can't see through. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of freaky. But that it all comes back to the imagination again, doesn't it? So a lot of the times in lakes, you can't see through the water. But lakes are like the safest place in the world because there's nothing in there that's going to kill you. Yeah, so yeah, the pity there's no lakes near me so I could go swimming out there because I'm down at Venice Beach in LA and there's a lot of great white sharks out there. But the funny thing is they don't attack anyone. It's crazy, right? Who would have thought sharks aren't interested in eating people? But yeah, oh, wow. It's, a, it's sometimes a big scary world out there when we let our imaginations run away with us. We have to be brave. Do you know why? Because our parents are so scared of everything. The grown-ups are scared. Like I'm a special case. I'm not scared of anything. Um, maybe. What am I scared of? I am scared of when my leg battery goes flat. Does anyone else have that problem? You're just walking around, you're having a little shop or going walking the dog and all of a sudden your leg starts beeping at you and then it goes flat. And then I have to walk around with a stiff leg and I feel like a pirate. It's just no fun whatsoever. That, that's one of the things I'm afraid of. Is anyone else scared of anything else? Like, I got to look through these. They're coming in. This, oh my goodness. Did you know there's about 17,000 people watching this? So the answer, there's a lot of answers to look through. Whew, I'm surprised my computer's not crashing. These are great answers. Scared of going back to school. I know. Sometimes it's the anticipation of doing something that you're afraid of that's the worst thing. It's like me speaking. So when I first started, I was so scared. I get on stage and my whole body was shaking and my face would go red and my eyes were water and I was a grown up and I was scared of that. So, you know, you guys are way tougher than we are. And sometimes it's not bad to be scared. It doesn't mean that you can't do something. Like when I do diving missions with the Navy or when I play with bombs underwater, like blow up channels, and I couldn't even see my hands in front of my face because the water was so murky. And I had to put the bombs together just by feel alone. And I was scared. But that doesn't mean we don't have to do it. Sometimes it's more exciting to be scared and then do it anyway. And then you feel even better because you've overcome something. So maybe you can try out this. Maybe you can give that a crack. Maybe find something that you're scared of and purposely confront it. You know, that's what I did with sharks too. I was scared of sharks. So I went and I dove with bull sharks. I confronted the shark that actually changed my life and tried to kill me. And I learned to hand feed it. And then I got to teach cool people like Ronda Rousey how to do it. I got to teach Will Smith to dive with tiger sharks. And on Shark Week this year, I got to teach Mike Tyson how to do it. And he, well, let, let me tell you, I got a question for you in a minute. But sometimes we need to really just be brave. You know, we have to be brave for our parents. We have to be brave for our little brothers and sisters. And we have to be the light that we want to see in those people. And so look after them because they're a valuable commodity and they want the best for you and they want you to be happy. And so you can be a survivor too. G'day, Brian, how you doing? I have to say, you know what I'm scared of right now, Paul? Other what, than what? passing out again, like I did when you were talking before. I, I oh, no. You advice and not well. leave the room. I'm scared of not having enough time for all the great questions yourself. people have asking. So, um, oh yeah, do you care if I, if I, but we've got some great questions. We also have an amazing list of fears. We could be reading those forever, but my fear is I'm scared. One, that people won't get a chance to enter a selfie contest. We should do that pretty quick. And, um, and two, that we won't have time to get to all their questions. So, oh goodness, um, I've, I've been talking so much. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's all been great. Uh, gave me time to come to the smelling salts and, uh, and all that, but, um, <laughs> How about, just to make sure, those who've had their cameras ready and, and may, may need to charge them soon, uh, remember, guys, if, uh, if you 
take this picture, um, you know, with, with uh, Paul, with sharks, with seals, with everything else he's got around with them, prosthetics, and uh, upload it to Instagram, tag Paul together, tag Varsity Tutors. We'll have those handles up on the, uh, on the way out. Um, you'll be entered to win um, your very own autographed shark, real, possibly, maybe fake. But, um, Paul, let's, uh, let's give him that selfie opportunity. All righty. We got one shark. How many sharks can we fit in a selfie? Two sharks. Three sharks. I've run out of hands. Who wants a shark? There's an attack shark. It's shark off. And the dangling shark. So this is the shark that you're going to win. And I made a very messy signature. Yeah, sharks. How's that, Brian? Though I, those are some pretty good pictures. We, uh, the other one too, a little life hack for those who are just enjoying it too much. This will be up on our YouTube channel soon. So if you want to pause it and get your favorite of those, um, you can always do that also. also. So um, that actually was for signing a shark. I've, I've never written anything on a shark before. I'm actually kind of impressed by that yeah, signature. I, I so. took my time. I, I, it's not too bad. Uh, yeah. And that was left-handed too, because my <laughs> right hand is not really good at it. So impressive that's and the things you may have had to learn i'm uh, like thank you for sharing all those stories with us we got a ton of questions that i thought were were really good so uh, i wanted to make sure we save some time for those because um interestingly enough with a story like yours people are curious so well, it makes uh makes a lot of sense so one really common one um that i thought i'm just kind of looking down to make sure i get people's names right i know elsa and alexander asked about lily also asked about is sort of an if you could go back you know, one, what would you do, uh, you know, that day to be a little bit safer or two, and this was Lily's question. I thought was great. Would you do anything differently? Kind of knowing how the rest of your life and career have unfolded. Well, I try not to think about it that way because it's not really something that we can do. And I, people ask me if I would change it and you know what? I don't think I would. I don't think I would because I don't know who that person would be. I don't know who the Paul that didn't get attacked by a shark, is he happy? Is he, has he got a good job? Is he enjoying his life? And I don't know if he is or not, but I know who I am and I know that I get to live an amazing life and I might be a little bit slower. Sometimes I trip over on my robot leg. Sometimes I drop the shopping and glasses because of my robot hand and I have to clean up glass but I get to live a really great life and I'm happy and I have a great job and I get to spend time with a whole bunch of people like you. So if that means that I can't ha I get to have a robot leg and a robot hand, then I'm totally happy with it. I wouldn't change a thing. That's great. I mean, that uh, certainly seems like you're pretty happy. So yeah, it'd be hard to imagine you uh, not doing this. So it uh, worked out pretty well for all 17,000 and change of us too. So, um, so thank you. Hey, uh, a really quick one. Actually, this isn't quick at all. Um, why? <laughs> so you mentioned your wetsuit had you looking like, uh, you know, basically a seal like shark. Why? I thought this is a great question. Why are wetsuits black? If, if that makes us look like seals. <laughs> well, no one really knows whether sharks are attracted to color. There used to be a phrase, yum, yum, yellow, because people thought that sharks attacked yellow things for some reason. Now I've been in a kayak that has been bitten by a great white shark and it was red. But the reason that wetsuits are black, well, not all wetsuits are black, but I think the neoprene actually just comes in that color. But the thing is that from a shark's eye view, it doesn't really matter because all they see is the silhouette. And so because you have the light above you and it's dark in front, they only see the blackness anyway. So it doesn't matter what you wear. There might be a, a certain change of, you know, hint of a little less bright, less, less dark, but it's going to look dark anyway. And so, you know, when you're on a boogie board, you kind of look like a turtle, big fat turtle. When you're on a surfboard, you kind of look like a seal because all they can see is the silhouette. 
We'll have to see if I'm still within the return window on my pink wetsuit now, Paul. So that was that was good advice. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll they'll let me return it. A um, couple other these are I think are relatively quick questions about the uh, the attack. One, uh, someone some wanted to know. I thought this was great. Did you ever get your motorbike back, even though it might have been tough to ride? And two, do you still keep in touch with the guys from the boat that saved you? Uh, as far as the motorbike. Of course I did. There is nothing that we can't achieve with the right tools. Sometimes that right tool is simply the right mindset. So working with a motorcycle company in Australia, they modified a bike for me. They took everything from the right-hand side, the throttle and the foot brake, and they put it on the left. So now I can ride. The only problem is it's in Australia and I'm in America and I can't get it in the country for some reason. So I haven't had a chance to ride it except around a parking lot in two years. So, you know, hopefully one day I'll, I'll get another motorbike or get that one sent out here. Um, oh, sorry, what was the second part of that? That one was, are you still friends with the guys that, uh, that oh, were on the boat that, oh. that pulled you to safety? Absolutely. Absolutely. Tomo, who was the main guy in charge, who kept me alive. Um, he's from Papua New Guinea. He's a little, little, little guy. He's just absolute champion. He stayed in the Navy but he didn't dive again. <laughs> he was like, I've had enough of diving. I've seen the inside of Paul. I'm not going in the water anymore. So he's still working with the Navy, but um, in a different job. My friend, uh, Ryan, he was there. He was actually asleep in the bottom of the boat when I got bitten. So that was a pretty horrible thing to wake up to. But he lives in Madagascar now and he runs a, a diving resort and he discovered prehistoric giant lemur skulls in an underwater cave and so he's doing awesome stuff out in madagascar now my other friend Lockie stayed in the navy and became a special forces guy so yeah we stay in touch like those guys are you know forever be a part of my life yeah i mean that friends like that that will come to your aid then you definitely want to keep them pretty close so uh -huh, um, that's great to hear so thank you for even just kind of knowing their names makes i think all of us feel a little bit closer now before those guys got involved i was just another great question you know you tried to grab the eyeball you tried to punch and, and none of it you know particularly worked what do you think made the shark let you go oh it didn't <laughs> i don't know why some people think it let me go it actually its teeth met in the middle. It's kind of like when you get a steak and you bite a chunk out of it and put it on the plate. Did you let that steak go or are you just busy chewing? So I think the shark was busy either swallowing and circling back around for another tasty morsel or it just isn't really much of a fan of uh, Paul's steak cooked rare. Oh man, if you had been seasoned a little bit better, it's a good thing you didn't didn't like douse yourself in you know salt and pepper or know, uh, teriyaki sauce or something. Maybe it was morning, because so. I peed in my wetsuit. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> Full disclosure: it's hard not to sometimes. Yeah, I did. Hey, one question we were going to ask the group, let's, we can pop that up, but I think everybody wants to know from you. You mentioned all the people that you've helped confront their fear of, of sharks. Um, so I think we want to know, but let's, let's see if people can guess first. Of these people, who was the most scared of sharks? Ooh, that's a tough one, hey? Because if you go through them, you know, are we going we gonna to take a poll here? Or am, am I just going to tell let's, everyone? Let's, Let's take the poll. Let's see what people think. Um, oh, because right, yeah, right. I think that's kind of fun. We know Let's these people are it. all known for being tough. Let's talk through it. You know, you've got Mike Tyson, like one of the world's best boxers ever. Like people are terrified of him. Would he be scared of sharks? You got Paul. I would say in the beginning, before I got attacked by a shark, I was probably the most scared. Ronda Rousey is amazing. She's so tough. She's so smart. Oh, but you know, and, and girls, you know, like we said, we discovered girls are tougher than guys. They don't pass out as as quickly in my presentation. So I'm going to say probably not Ronda Rousey. And Will Smith, he's pretty amazing, but he is just an actor. You know, he pretends. So maybe he can pretend to not be afraid of sharks. What What are we getting? We're getting a lot of Paul de Gelder. Thank you very much. That's really nice of you guys. Uh, <laughs> But the most afraid person out of all of those is Mike Tyson. He was terrified. And you'll be able to watch how terrified on Shark Week on the 9th. He was so afraid. He threw up before or after nearly every dive. 
I don't think that's something anyone's seen before, Mike Tyson throwing up out of fear. So <laughs> it's definitely worth a watch, but it was a great show. Mike was so nice. Uh, he's a really, really friendly guy. And I had a great time shooting that show, but he was legitimately terrified. That's amazing. I, when I was growing up, he was the baddest man on the planet. So yeah. um, definitely tuning in. That's Sunday, right? So um, really? yeah. So come come for Mike's day for Paul. Um, yeah, that's the hey, way. And as we're as we're speaking about all these, also just dawned. I mean, you are wearing yum yum yellow right now, which is I probably why all the. <laughs> All the model sharks are hanging around you nearby. Um, one other big one, like Angelina asked it, but I think a whole bunch of other people have had this, um, other than the obvious one um, that we talked about a decent amount today. What was your other most exciting adventure in the water? Oh, there's been so many moments. Uh, so last year, I, so I've always wanted to go and learn how to free fall parachute because in the army, I was a paratrooper. Well, we didn't do free fall. We did a different sort of parachuting called static line where you don't sort of like, you know, Mission Impossible where they're like, and then you pull your parachute. So we don't, we don't do that in static line. So I always wanted to do that, but I didn't think anyone would let me with one leg and one hand. And then Shark Week came along and they said, Paul, we want you to parachute out of a plane directly into the ocean and survive for 44 hours surrounded by sharks. And I said, you're crazy. Let's do it. And so I got to parachute out of a plane 11,000 feet and land into the ocean. So that was pretty awesome. And then sw probably swimming with great white sharks without a cage was incredible as well. I like how that's your afterthought. Like, oh yeah, also <laughs> I've, I've swam with great white sharks without a cage. That's, um, that's pretty incredible. Um, hey, one thing I know, uh, you know, we've seen you say on, on Shark Week before, you may say it again uh, on Sunday's episode. Um, and I love the quote is don't act like food. So for everyone, it's still August. We, you know, for most of us, we've got at least a couple of weeks before school goes back, um, especially if this hurricane passes, you know, people on both coasts may, may do one more last ocean trip. Um, your advice for us going in the ocean to not act like food, what does that mean? That means that, well, it's specifically when you are faced with a shark. Now, a shark is going to be curious, like we've already established, but there are certain things you can do to remain safe that we utilize in Shark Week. If you see a shark, you want to keep your eyes on it all the time because they know when you're watching surprisingly and we did experiments with this where we turned our back on a tiger shark and the the cheeky little critter decided oh i'm gonna creep up and have a look and maybe i'll have a nibble and at the last minute we told them and they turned around and the shark was like it was caught with its fin in the cookie jar and it, it was like no i wasn't gonna do anything and it swims away so you want to keep your eyes on it at all times because fish the, pr the prey of the shark will panic and swim away. So you don't want to act like a fish. So you don't want to panic. You don't want to swim away. You want to stay calm. You want to keep your eyes on the shark. And if it comes in, you do what we what I told you to do last week. You put your hand on the top of its head and you just push it away. And if it comes back, you do it again. And then you just slowly swim to shore or to the boat or whatever. Um, just you got to remain calm. And the funny thing is that people think that when they see a shark, they're going to panic and they're going to scream. And But most people I've discovered are more curious about the shark and actually want to get closer to it. So it's that imagination thing. We think everything's going to go wrong, but then you see the shark and in reality, it's kind of awesome. That's incredible. Better you than me. Uh, I'll be watching Shark Week to, uh, to see what it looks like without having to do it on my own. Um, hey, one last question. I think kind of on behalf of everyone. We had, I think we had like over a thousand people say something that they were scared of, even if a couple of them did say nothing. Um, and uh, it's been really neat. So I think one, one big theme and, and, you know, appreciate you kind of sharing with it is, you know, we need to, to learn to, uh, to overcome our fears, be confident when we push a shark away and everything. Uh, maybe we end on this one. Uh, what's kind of your, your last words of advice for all of us fear something um, from someone who's had to face down one of the craziest fears um, and, and justify it, I think. What's, uh, what's kind of your lasting advice for how do we confront our fears, whether it's spiders, clowns, the dark, being home alone, bullies, uh, you know, asking a crush out, all those things that people have typed in. What's your advice for how do we, how do we face down our fears? Come, come up with a plan. So everything that you are going through and everything that you're going to go through in life, people have already been through it. 
Okay, there's very little, even shark attacks, as rare as they are, I turned to people that had been bitten by sharks as well, because we have the internet, we have Google, we have YouTube, we can watch videos, we can learn, we don't have to go through these things alone. We can learn from other people that have been through them as well. We can learn about their failures, what they did wrong, so we don't do the same mistakes. And we can learn about their successes and we can even do better than their successes. And so don't feel like you're alone. Go and get that knowledge to dispel that fear, learn about how you can overcome it and talk to people as well. Don't hold this stuff inside. Tell people, get it off your chest. Give it. Give your fears to the universe so the universe can deal with them and you can go back to living your dream. Perfect advice that, uh, especially from, from us here at Varsity Tutors, right? Learning is power, knowledge is power. Um, you know, anything you're scared of, you know, sometimes like maybe sharks, maybe bears, it's scared of you, but, uh, but otherwise there's, there's ways to learn from others experience from just kind of understanding, you know, why, why things are the way they are, why the dark may cast shadows, why sharks may uh, come up and bonk you on the head because they're looking for rays. So, um, amazing advice. Hey, thank you so much, Paul. This has been really amazing. Um, I guess one last one is if people are, uh, more interested in sharks today than they were, a week ago, where can they find out more? Oh, geez. Once again, Google is great. We got Shark Week coming up. So that's going to be uh, Finieth. What was it? I was going to try and throw in a little uh, um, fin, Fiesta, Finiesta. That's not really going to work, is it? Uh, <laughs> it's a shark. Shark Extravaganza next week on Shark Week. So tune into that. Uh, there's plenty of stuff online. You can watch YouTube videos. There's plenty of books you can get off Amazon. Uh, so yeah, there's a, a wealth of knowledge out there. Excellent. Well, especially Shark Week, uh, my DVR is set. So uh, I think you were mentioning before class started how some people even take the week off. So um, <laughs> now I can't, we've got other exciting classes coming up at varsitytutors.com, including a bunch of ocean explorer camps, more things on sharks and marine biology. So check us out at varsitytutors.com if you want to learn more about the ocean and anything else. Um, so we'll love to see you there, Paul. Thanks again for your time. Like we'll all be watching uh, you and Iron Mike on, uh, on Friday, uh, Sunday night, Sunday night on Discovery Channel. Channel. And uh, thanks again for, for sharing so many cool stories and, uh, and some jokes. So um, really appreciate it, Paul. Thank <laughs> you very terrible much. Terrible jokes. All right. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for everyone that tuned in. Thanks for coming along and having a chat and giving me your awesome answers. Hopefully we'll all hang out again soon.